Hey, it's Monday night once again. It comes around every time this time of the week. That's what it says. All righty. And it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. And uh, our guest tonight is going to be a guy who used to own a pharmacy, was a mayor of a small town in upstate New York in Saratoga <laughs> Springs, and is now a voice talent and a podcaster. Mike Lenz is going to be with us. He's on Mike Lenz 4.0, I guess. That's right. And then we've got some tech. Yeah, it's, I, have a little, I have a little product to help you stay cool in the booth, and it's very low tech. You'll like it. All right, coming up next on Voice Over Body Shop. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is, together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super-secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. That's right. And there'll be no BS tonight. Because we got a great show. A lot of drop. I know. Mike Lenz is going to be our guest and uh, talking about his fascinating career and some really cool stuff about podcasting. I'm really here for the air conditioning. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the only reason yeah. I came tonight. Yeah. Mind me for crying out, 121 <laughs> degrees in my backyard on Friday. Crap. Fried some of the plants. I mean, yeah. it's scary because it's like, yeah. well, what's going to kill all the vegetation if it keeps getting this warm? Yeah. But oh, uh, yeah. finally, it's cooling off to 95 and humid. I must feel very balmy right now. <laughs> it was. I could actually walk out onto my porch. You know, it's. It w used to be. You know, it was. It was pleasant all spring, and now we're living in the suburbs of hell. <laughs> oh, Billy. Yeah. You know. Of course. Now the suburbs of hell. It. You know. Th some people think of Hollywood as hell. That sounds like a B movie. It. It is. You know. But it's not. It. It is sort of like hell, only with Starbucks. <laughs> all right. All right. I have a little bit of show and tell. Oh, goody. Went, even though it was about 105 degrees. Jack, yeah, get the fire extinguisher, yeah, will you? At about, about uh, you know, in, in Pasadena. Went yeah. to the Rose Bowl flea market. If oh. you know anything about the Rose Bowl flea market, it's huge and very hot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I like to collect old radios. I go right to the tarmac yeah. in the summer whenever possible. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and, and I'm, you know, I'm knowing a lot about old radios. Yeah. And I found this thing. It's a 1941 FEDA desktop radio with a handle on it. And and the guy's like, oh, 25 bucks. No, I've seen these things for, you know, well over 100 bucks on eBay. F-A-D-A. FEDA. 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 Yeah. Big, big, you know, radio and television manufacturer that went out of business, I think, probably just before the war. Yeah, it sounds like a pre-war thing. Pre-World yeah. War II company. Yeah. But, but listen to this. Hey, you got to hit it. California. Yeah, dude. <laughs> you know, the tubes have to warm up and yeah, stuff. Yeah, he's a little, he's a little, it's kind of like, a, you know, getting out of bed and, uh, 
my yeah. tubes are going. Ah, yeah, I gotta clean up. But, but it, it works. It worked right out of the box. You know, I forgot. I thought that AM radios really, you know, old analog AM radios really didn't work that well anymore. That's and they mean. don't. <laughs> but they still suck. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you remember when portable AM radios meant you could shove a battery inside that thing and it would weigh about? Yeah, that's why I don't understand pounds. why there's a handle on this thing. It's not a portable. It's I love it. My <laughs> parents had a, a TV, like a 20 inch Panasonic, that was you know 70 pounds. It had a handle. It had a handle on it. It was a portable television. That's right. Still had to plug it in. <laughs> All right, enough of this nonsense. It's now time for Voice of a Body Shop presents. The V-O-B-S Voice Over Extra News. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. And here is the Voice Over Extra News for July 9th, 2018. And we'll talk about voice over gender. Do consumers really care whether a voice talent is male or female? Well, obviously male and female characters need those definitive voices. But otherwise, what's the big deal in recent of all of this? In a recent voiceover extra webinar on specific voyo genres, VO voyo, VO genres, <laughs> our good friend J. Michael Collins points out trends for ty- voice types. And he says that female voices are gaining in casting choices in many areas, especially e-learning and commercial advertising. Amid this change in an article now on VoiceOver Extra, longtime voice actor Kim Handyside's research is a bit of the history of gender in voiceovers and gives us an insight into what's changing and what's not. Kim notes that in the 1980s, when she worked in broadcasting, the staff ratio of men and women on air was something like six to one in the DJ and voiceover world. And in news and talk shows, male voices dominated by about five to one. Today, she says the tradition of seeking male voiceover or male over female voice artists is still alive and well, but there is a change. A recent industry trend report shows a 24% increase in demands for female voice artists, while demands for male artists increased only 16%. It's small, but it is a noticeable shift. Also, Kim says, online casting sites and casting directors for all forms of voiceover currently see a two-to-one ratio of hiring male over female voices. And that's an improvement over hiring from just 20 years ago. Of course, advertisers want voices that are best suited for their messages. In studies, the ad industry finds the male voice to be more persuasive in genres like automotive and appliance retail. But the studies also reveal that the female voice invokes more trust. Female voices are prominent in beauty and health and have infiltrated the sound, the sound of financial advertisements. And female voices in the lower pitch range tend to be perceived as powerful. And so are the best to gain access to traditional male roles. And of course, the ad world is always looking to mix things up to gain attention. So... Women's voices are making an upsurge in car retail, especially on the national level. Mm -hmm. And we might add that women are increasingly the voices of televised award shows. Let's just ask our good friend Randy Thomas for a peek at her VO date book. Mm -hmm. Kim's article and hundreds more await you now at voiceoverextra.com, your daily resource for voiceover success. That's right. Yeah, you know, there's a, a Volvo commercial that runs a lot on, uh, at, uh, what is it, CBSN? Yeah. Female voice on that one. I yep. mean, you know, it is still the rarity in comparison, but it, you know, they're, they're coming in. Yeah. Considering yeah. how many women are in our business, it should be, the ratio should be 50-50. Yeah. It's balancing. Yeah. I mean, balancing. yeah. I mean, you don't find a lot of female voices on beer commercials. Right. But you know what? If you're casting a beer commercial, wouldn't you want to be the one that does something different? Absolutely. It kind of reminds me of the old days when Don LaFontaine was on everything. Mm -hmm. He eventually started losing work because all of a sudden they realized, wait a minute, that guy's on everything. We need a different voice, you know, because like branding and all that stuff. So, you know, who knows? It would be interesting interesting to mix it up once in a while. The Simpsons on Fox. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway. So what's up in tech this week? Well, I've got something decidedly low-tech to start off with, and that is a 
I was getting ready to go for a bike ride Sunday morning. I do this thing called the coaster brake challenge where we, we do the most idiotic thing ever, which is ride bikes with coaster brakes. Yes. Like your beach is, cruiser. Is that what the big scratch on your knee is no, from? No, that was not from coaster brake. That was another ride I did last week. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I realized it was going to be in one of those really hot days we just had. And I was like, I was concerned about overheating. And I was talking to Maxine and she was like, don't you have one of those towels that keeps you cool? You know, it, it absorbs moisture and you can throw it in the fridge and all this stuff. And I was like, boy, that would be handy. Well, all of a sudden I realized, wait a minute, that thing's hanging on my wall. I got it from somewhere. I don't remember. But anyway, I have this towel. It's called Velo Cool. Ooh. So you're thinking Velo for bicycle. But this could, I mean, I tried it. I used it very for the very first time on this ride on Sunday. Drape soaked it in water you have to saturate it and just let it soak in water for a while just plain ordinary water plain ordinary water okay. and when you bring the towel out of the package it's really weird it's like feel this thing it's like stiff and almost like plasticky cardboard it's yeah. very weird but what's amazing this they call it a hyper evaporative pva which holds 20 times its weight in water like a diaper <laughs> yeah, maybe. And maybe yeah, what maybe it's made out of. <laughs> exactly. Know. So you soak this in water. You just drench, You just hang it over your shoulder. Actually, you drench it in water. You wring it out. It says right on the package, snap it three times like this. You know, snap the thing. <laughs> yeah. And then you just drape it over your shoulder and you're good. So I thought it was pretty cool because it's not sopping wet. Yeah. It's not like having a washcloth or something. Right. Not a good idea of moisture in your equipment. You actually soak it and then you wring it out. Mm -hmm. And so the water that remains trapped inside these little cells is what keeps you cool. Right. Well, so it's it evaporating very slowly. Yeah, it's evaporating. And it's doing it very gradually, and it's not going to drip on anything. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought these look really interesting. So if you're looking for a different way to stay cool in your VO booth, other than working completely without clothing on and still dripping in sweat or whatever you Which do to get through it, this could be something you could try it th i don't even know if the company is frankly still in business but if you want to go look for them the website is bike 99.bike <laughs> i was looking for a way to tie my hobby of biking into voiceover this is the only way so far i figured out how to do it it's this towel okay but anyway that's that um in terms of like uh something far more boring audio drivers um there was a story recently on audi audience website we were being a little critical of audience as of late, you know, some folks with the ID 22 are having some issues with stability and things like that. But that one thing that they're known for is really being up to date on drivers. And they have a whole story on their website. I won't recap it. I don't need to, you can go find it at audience.com slash tutorial slash audio dash drivers. And you can check out their story about drivers and it really explains what the heck these things do why they're so important and why you should always be up to date on drivers. But my thought on drivers and updates and upgrades, you know, cause we talked about upgrade or not upgrade last week is, uh, and this was also triggered by a, a post. I think I saw in the twisted wave form from Sean Daly. He was saying, I'm using an old version of twisted wave 1.17. Is it okay to up update it now? Thing is, it's like, if you're on an old version of your software, that's fine if it's the version that was designed to run on your OS. So if you have OS, for example, 10.11, something a few years old, you should probably be running software that was designed to run on that version. If you're running a brand new OS, which in this case, Sean was, he was using the most up-to-date version of Mac, you should almost always be running the most up-to-date version of software. That will guarantee the most trouble-free. Versus the other way around. If you're on an if you're on an older version of Mac or older version of Windows, you don't want to be necessarily running the newest version. Sometimes they don't jive. And definitely not the other way around. If you're on a brand new OS, you don't want to run old versions of software. They just tend to not jive so well. Same goes for drivers and things like that. If you're going to upgrade your OS, make sure drivers are updated as well. They need to stay in lockstep with what version of OS that you're on for the most trouble-free operation. On the Mac side of things, we enjoy the fact that many of the things that we use are just plug and play. You plug them in and they work. Yeah, like the Scarlets and all that stuff. Their, their driver is kind of built into the USB codec spec. I, I don't completely understand all of it, but it's generally just plug it and play. It just yeah. generally works. 
On the Windows side, there are some devices that are plug and play now more than there used to be, but Windows is still very touchy about drivers. So Focusrite in general has been something that's come up a lot lately in terms of stability. And what really almost always clears up the problem is being on the latest driver update. So keep your drivers up to date. You'll generally have fewer problems with your audio interfaces, less glitchiness, less flakiness, that kind of thing. All righty. Well, Mike Lenz is standing by. We'll have him in just a little bit. Yep. Again, if you got a tech question for us, throw it in the chat room, and uh, we'll be happy to answer that. But we have a topic to talk about, mm. and we'll get to that right after these incredibly important messages. Don't go away. And now we return to those thrilling days of yesteryear, and we find our heroes, Sheriff Dan and Marshal George, on a dusty stakeout at VoiceOver Gulch. Let's see what drama is about to take place. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. Hey, you want to be an audiobook narrator, but you don't know where to turn for the best training. And the truth about working successfully with ACX. Well, here's your golden ticket. Registration for the 2018 ACX Home Study Audiobook Masterclass is now open for a limited time at acxmasterclass.com forward slash forward slash, thank you, register. You'll get four weeks of absolutely transformational training via audio, video, and online with support every step of the way. Because you'll be led by David H. Lawrence the 17th and the amazing Dan O'Day, whose past students have narrated and produced close to 3,000 audiobooks on the ACX platform. Go to acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. And when you register before 9 p.m. Pacific on Tuesday, July 19th, David and Dan will pay your first $500 of tuition. So act fast. acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. Do what you've dreamed of doing, narrating audiobooks as part of your VO portfolio. Go to acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. That's acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control, and it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Well, we're back here on Voice Over Body Shop. We've been doing this show for s over seven years. Or some variation thereof. <laughs> yes. And we have a podcast version of it, too. That's right, you we know. do. So if you, you can't watch it you know, on live or you want to watch the replay or you can't watch it because you're driving, you can listen to the podcast. Don't Just, watch it while you're driving. Well, you can listen try. to us. Well, listen to unless us. you have one of those amazing self-driving cars. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, like the Uber ones that seem to be just running into things everywhere. That's like, <laughs> I know, good. technology. Yes. it'll catch up. Speaking that. speaking of technology, mm -hmm. uh, this is a somewhat technological business that we're in in voiceover. If you if you're intimidated by the technology, if you're really not sure what it is <laughs> that's supposed to work. You got guys that can help. It's us two. Uh, and if you want some help, all you have to do is contact us. Because I think chances are, between the two of us, we have created and maintained and tuned more home voiceover studios than anybody. That anybody can claim. They may say, well, I've got a lot of students. And I told them, you know, turn mic on, you know. 
or or you've got some audio guy whose actual job is installing speakers for Muzak. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you need someone who knows the unique environment that is a home voice over studio. It didn't exist 15 years ago. No. And yeah. for the last 15 years, that's what we've been doing. Mm-hmm. We've been doing that kind of stuff. If you want to work with George, and he'll tell you all about the stuff he does, go over to georgethetech.com or georgethetech for you people that like short URLs. All my services are on there. There's a services menu. You can book services, pay for the service. It's all organized in a way that most people can understand. But there's also a lot of self-service items on there, like sound checks and stacks and racks and all that kind of stuff. And Dan, what's your home on the web? You can go to homevoiceoverstudio.com. Go to my site and you'll see all the things that I do, some of the things that I've done. Uh, a lot of my videos are on there, and I know some of your videos are on your site too. And, of course, I have the Specimen Collection Cup. <laughs> you know, click on the Specimen Collection Cup. Audio Specimen. Audio Specimen Collection Cup. And uh, it's a Dropbox, and for 25 bucks, I will analyze your audio and see if perhaps there are certain things you could be doing better. Or if it's fabulous, I'll be honest, it's, like, it's great, don't worry about it. That's the most important thing. When you mentioned the uh, the AV company doing your your micro, you know, your voiceover booth, mm-hmm. it just triggered a memory of a really really funny uh, Portlandia episode I found on Netflix. Uh, oh, the, the one where with all the microphones and all the equipment. Well, or, they do a lot of different yeah, stuff, but this one was about a speaker company called <laughs> Speakers of the House, <laughs> and it was the two of them, you know, the two the, right, the right, couple right. doing speaker install. Yeah. And by the by the time they were done. Every shot, every space in the house had a round black speaker grill, including the pillow. <laughs> it was freaking, it was so damn funny. But it was just the whole, the whole banter between them and the, and the customer. Right. And the inconvenience of them being in the home and drilling and stapling things that they, you know, right in the middle. There's a wire going across the kitchen counter and they're stapling it down and <laughs> The owner's like, Sounds I don't want familiar. Staples. It's really freaking funny. And, and then they had a sketch on the same episode that was the self-employed union. And it was a bunch of people like at home that work at home, yeah. you know, and complaining about being interrupted while they're at work. You know, it was a great episode. I think it's season six, episode nine or something yeah, like that's that. A, that's a funny it's show. It's on Netflix. Check it out. It's right. really great. All right. Well, one of the things that we talked about last week was soundproofing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because someone had a problem with the door to their booth yes. and sound was just coming in. That's right. Especially the sound of <laughs> the a dog. Nails. It was a dog on a, on a wooden floor. <laughs> but, I, you know, I've been reading a lot. A lot of people have been, you know, in some of the chats and stuff like that are talking about noise reduction software. Mm-hmm. Plugins and all Plugins. sorts of Yeah, and now there are some there's some really good ones that are really amazing. Yeah. Like uh Isotope RX and And that's one from Waves is popular. Right. You know, and Adobe Audition has it. Yeah. Audacity, Audacity has a, you know, some people hey, it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Here's the thing though. All of these strategies, all of this technology really shouldn't have to be used. Uh not at the talent end. No, absolutely not. I mean no. It's used in posts sometimes. Right, if, to if clean necessary. clean up a mix. Right. Yeah. But most of these things, if you don't use them right, are going to cause you problems. And it may cost you work because it's going gonna, it's gonna to create digital uh, artifacts and you're going to lose yeah. some frequencies and stuff like that. Trust me, engineers know what noise reduction sounds like. Right. If it's used too heavily, they, they hear it and it, they, they don't like it. Exactly. And so if you don't know how to use something, don't use it. I mean, it's as simple as that. But I think people need to understand that these noise reduction strategies and plugins were not designed for dry voiceover. It doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense because your voice should be pristine in the environment in which you record. So the majority of the problem is, is that a lot of people aren't really creating enough isolation for themselves uh, so that there is exterior noise, the sound of a highway or air movement. I believe because you and I have created literally over a thousand studios. Mm -hmm. We've heard audio from everywhere. We know every single problem that there can be, which is why you listen for two seconds. Oh, it's that. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's that. We just had the experience at it. Yeah. If you can create the right acoustical environment, number one, most important thing in your home voiceover studio, 
it's got to be well isolated. You've got to understand isolating yourself from exterior noise. Doesn't necessarily mean soundproofing because that's really hard at a home studio yeah. unless you have a booth or something like that. But if you've got air movement noise or the sound of people walking or planes going overhead or any of that stuff, you know, I think it's a lot easier to just wait till that stuff goes by than to try and deal with it in some technological way. These filters are not there to perform miracles on stuff that should be easy to do in the first place. So it's my firm belief that do everything you can physically before you use one of these strategies. These things were really designed for filmmakers, documentary makers, radio interviewers. If you're doing an interview with a really important person or it's there's really good stuff, and there's the sound of, you know, I would say typewriters. Yeah, but who uses those anymore? Uh, or phones or a train going by. You need to save that interview. Yeah. Yeah, you can use it for that. But for your home voiceover studio, you have a home voiceover studio to, to create a quiet space. Yeah, I mean, putting a Band-Aid on everything that you send out is not a good precedent. I mean, it, okay, let's say you're getting totally starting from scratch. You, all you got is a USB mic or something in a walk-in closet. You're doing your best. If it's set up correctly, you can use noise reduction tools, but they have to be set, dialed in absolutely correctly. And that's something that we do. Like when I set up a rack or a stack, if noise reduction is used, it's not like just a single thing that's thrown in and then it's, it's a part of a scheme of different things. Right. Like I use it in conjunction with a high-pass filter and maybe a downward expand. I'm using a... a, a a recipe. It's like a recipe. Right. You can either just throw a piece of fish on the grill or you can season it and get it tasting just right. This is what I do with these tools. So you can make use of it in the right amounts, but just the wrong amount. And it sounds, it's not, it's not great. So yeah, there, there are um, better ways to deal with most noise issues than just using a plug-in like that, right. I think. Right. And now a lot of people have problems with non-physical noise, mm -hmm. which is electronic noise, electronic noise or RFI. or RFI, or perhaps uh, white noise and pink noise. Yeah, like yeah. yeah, Those things are totally preventable, though. Yeah. A lot depends on the mic you're using. If your gain staging is proper, those things also need to be dealt with physically with a dial mm -hmm. just before you start using other strategies to do that. I've been working on putting together a quote for, well, I actually did put together a quote for a big ad, it ad ad agency in San Francisco who wants to put in two studios for their talent. And what it came down to was I gave them a quote to build a studio that can be used anytime. The talent's booked at three. If there's a jackhammer outside, if there's a gardener, whatever, they can still do the session. Well, the bottom line was when they realized what it would actually cost to have a studio that could actually be do doing that, they were like, actually, you know what? I'm talking to like one of the heads of the agency. They're like, we can just stop recording for a minute if there's a gardener or something. I'm like, are you sure? And he said, yeah, I think we, I was like, all right, well, that saved you about 15 or thousand dollars, give or take, you know, yeah. cause that, that last five or 10% <laughs> of noise you're trying to eliminate that helicopter hovering or whatever is so expensive to deal with. It's just so costly. Quite, the time factor is not as critical as everybody thinks. It's only the very, very small niche of the voiceover world, which is like the affiliate stuff, the promos, promo the work, thing yeah. that's like really time sensitive where that matters the most. Right. And if you're getting directed on live commercials in your home studio, national commercials, that's pretty rare. But maybe that's a situation where, it, but again, this is a tiny percentage a of you. Just a tiny little sliver. It really is. Already. Yeah. So don't use that stuff. Unless you know how. Unless we've set it up for you. And it's like, it's kind of like, think of it like this. It's like an opioid. Don't use it yourself. Let us show you the right amount. And then we'll keep you from getting addicted to it. That's right. Let me, let me. Is that timely? Let's put that in. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Mike Lenz is standing by out east. So you can say out east when you're way west. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, uh, we'll be talking to him about an amazing career that he's had and some of the cool stuff that he's doing, especially in podcasting, mm -hmm. which is going to become a popular subject here. All right. Stay tuned for that. Coming up next here on voiceover body shop. 
Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there in the trenches doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success. In one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. Hey, everybody. Well, let's say you've put all that work in, you've soundproofed your studio, you're ready to play with the big boys and girls, start doing commercials, live directed reads, but ISDN is out of reach. It's too expensive. It's just not being used in your world. What tool is being used to connect you to other studios around the entire globe. That's probably the one that's gonna be what you're looking for. It's probably gonna be Source Connect. Source Connect is made by Source Elements and it is rapidly becoming the standard for audio direction, live recording, live remote recording for the voiceover business and beyond. And, and if you wanna give it a try, you can go to source-elements.com and you can get a 15 day free trial of Source Connect standard. You need standard, folks. That's the one that connects you to all the other major studios. They also have Source Connect now, which you can get right now and start playing with it immediately. You can even use it for, you know, letting a client listen in. It's totally free. But if you want to connect with the big studios out there, Source Connect standard is the tool to get, and you can get a trial right now. You don't even need to have a little iLock thingy. You just have to have an iLock account. So give it a try and tell them that we sent you. That way they'll want to keep sending us money and we'd really appreciate it. And uh, we'll be right back with Dan and Mike after this. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez. And you're enjoying Dan and George on the voiceover body shop. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez. And you're enjoying Dan and George on the voiceover body shop. And now we return to those thrilling days of yesteryear and we find our heroes, Sheriff Dan and Marshal George, on a dusty stakeout at VoiceOver Gulch. Let's see what drama is about to take place. All right, it's time to introduce our guest, formerly a pharmacy owner and mayor of Saratoga Springs in upstate New York, Mike Lenz is now a full-time professional voice talent and podcast producer. For more than 10 years, Mike has worked with clients on e-learning projects, corporate and web-based videos, audiobooks, brand imaging, and commercials. And Mike is also a Voice Arts Award-nominated podcast producer, creator, and host of the Mike Lenz VO podcast, and creator of Podcast Snap, podcastsnap.com, a concierge podcasting service, helping his clients with every step of their podcast creation and production. Mike lives in Saratoga Springs, New York with his wife and four children, and let's welcome him to VoiceOver Body Shop. Hey guys. How Mike, are you? how you doing? I'm wonderful. How are you guys? It's, uh, we're just great here, and it's uh, I hear it's been pretty sticky back east. <laughs> it's been pretty warm. You don't like California out here on the east coast. <laughs> well, no, but it's humid. Here it's dry wow. heat. 121 feels like 110. It's uh, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're 97 and muggy. Oh, oh lovely. 97 and muggy in upstate New York. I think you need a velo cool towel, my yeah, friend. That, that, that'll do I it. I saw that. I was liking that. Yeah. Anyway, so you know, Saratoga Springs is is a, is a beautiful place, and, and you know, it's as we like to say, it's the other end of the thruway from Buffalo, where I'm originally from. That's right. And uh, it's that place where you, you either make you either go straight and you go into Albany, or you make a left and you're in Saratoga Springs in a little while. And it's it, you're getting sort of in the into the wilds there. But tell us a little bit about uh, you know your life there, because you started off as a an owner of a pharmacy. Was that a family business of some sort? Yeah, my we had a family pharmacy, which is still in existence. 
uh, for my father owned it since 1960. I took over in 1999. So, um, you know, I, I'm sure I, I looked much too young to have owned a pharmacy for 30 years, but you know, I did. And it was, it was wonderful. And I enjoyed doing it for, for almost 30 years. Uh, but in addition to that, I had a lot of other interests, as you guys have mentioned, that I've uh, been involved in over the years, one of them being politics, which uh, I was involved in for about 10 years. Yeah. Now, how did you become, I mean, obviously you were elected, but yes. what prompted you to get involved in, in local politics like that? You know, it, it, Saratoga Springs is my hometown, and as far back as I can remember, I wanted to be mayor. Kind of one of those weird things growing up, you know, I, I just always thought I wanted to be on the city council and I wanted to be the mayor of my hometown. And I got the opportunity to run in my early 30s for a, a seat on the city council as finance commissioner, and I won uh, unexpectedly. People didn't expect us to win, but I won and served in that capacity for uh, three terms and then served as mayor for a term uh, and was elected at the age of 39. I was one of the youngest mayors uh, in Saratoga Springs history. So uh, I did that for a couple of years. And one of the cool things about being mayor of Saratoga that I'll share with you was that you may or may not know this, but down in Disney World, down in Orlando, there's actually a resort called the Saratoga Springs Resort. Do you guys know that? I do no, not know. I've been to Disney World in a while. Yeah, so. so check it out. So it's patterned after our city. And so I was the mayor when they opened it. So I got invited to go down to Disney and I got to hang out with Mickey and Minnie and be in a parade. And I got to bring down some Saratoga water. We poured it into the pool and there was this huge fountain <laughs> cool. and all this. It was unbelievable. I got feted by Disney just because I was the mayor of Saratoga. And one of the things at one of the events, they said, all these people were all coming around asking for autographs and they would walk up to me and they'd say, so are you the mayor of the Saratoga Springs Resort? Is that like your job at Disney? <laughs> <laughs> I said, man, I wish it was, but I'm actually the mayor of the real place way up, you know, way up north. But that was a pretty cool experience. Was it like not, was it supposed to be like small town USA turned into a, I mean, wh why yeah. did they pick that city? I guess they did a nationwide search. They were looking for a new resort. They wanted to pattern it after some type of American city. And Saratoga Springs has a lot of history. We have uh, yeah. the oldest thoroughbred racetrack in the nation, uh, huh. beautiful downtown, a lot of Victorian architecture. The Battle of and Saratoga was it. big time in the yeah, revolution. The Battle of Saratoga, right, right nearby. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of history. And uh, I'm not sure why they picked us, but I'm glad they did. That's really cool. Yeah, that, that is cool. It was a neat, a neat experience. Yeah. So you, you served as mayor for, for four years. And then I guess you made this transition from that I, and you still own the pharmacy too, I take it. That's right. And I mean, it was kind of a crazy time because I was running the city. <laughs> I was running uh, our pharmacy. We were having children. We were building a new home. Uh, so it was insane. But when I got out of politics, I kind of suddenly had a lot of free time on my hands. You know, you don't realize how much pressure you're under until you get out, right, of the pressure cooker. And then you, when you get out, you're like, wow, I mean, I have all this time. And I, I started to kind of unpack this creative side of me, which had always been there, but I kind of kept it under wraps because, you know, I'm, I'm a pharmacist and a mayor. That's kind of a button down kind of image that you have. And uh, people wouldn't expect me to necessarily have this creative bent, but I did. And I started getting involved in screenwriting, believe it or not. So I started looking on the internet, researching screenwriting, and I was kind of embarrassed to even be doing it because I had ingrained in me this image of this pharmacist mayor. Uh, but I, you know, I would literally be at, at night on my computer, kind of searching out, uh, you know, uh, internet sites for screenwriting, yeah. and I wouldn't even tell my wife. Surprisingly, when I came clean with her and told her that I've been up at night looking at screenwriting sites on the internet, she was somewhat relieved. I'm not sure why, but. Uh, <laughs> She, she was very, she was very supportive, and uh, and I did some amateur screenwriting. I, I was a finalist in a couple of competitions, got selected to be uh, part of the New York State Writers Institute, one of eight people in New York State to get chosen to work on their screenplays. So it, I had some amateur success, but that led me to going to a filmmakers group, and at one of these meetings, a local voice talent agency came and was handing out flyers, and I looked at them and the light bulb kind of went on and I'm like, wait a minute. One of the things I missed about being mayor was using my voice to communicate. I loved speaking to groups, speaking on the radio and television. And I'm like, hold on a minute. I can get trained 
people will pay me to talk. I can use my voice to communicate and I don't have to run for office to do it. And man, I was hooked. <laughs> I was in and hadn't looked back since. That, that's great. And, 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 and you found this world that we inhabit, which is voiceover in the community. I know. You know, Ama and just an amazing community. Yeah. And then, and, and I can't remember if we've met, I certainly know your name, but we have, have we met at FAFCON or, uh, no, we've never officially met. The first FAFCON that I went to was this past year, so I got ah, in under the I wire. I wasn't there, yeah. That's right. And all the others, wire. but I, I happened to miss that one. <laughs> Two I ships know. in the night. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But I certainly was yeah. familiar with your name when uh, Catherine told us that we're having Mike Lenz on. And I yeah. Heard a story about you being mayor and stuff like that, so that was really cool. Uh, so you, what kind of work have you been doing? Well, I love to say that I, you know, I'm the new voice of uh, Home Depot, but I can't tell you that not yet. Anyway, yeah, I know the, the I know the voice of Home Depot, and it's uh, not man. you. So it's a good gig. That's a good gig. Um, but I do primarily e-learning work, uh, a lot of e-learning work, corporate narration, some uh, some uh, image branding for some companies in Europe, um, a lot of audiobook work as well. Uh, so that that's the bulk of my work, and I, I've gotten one commercial gig since I got an agent. Uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, but commercial work is not a big part of what I do. Uh, primarily, it's e-learning, corporate narration, and uh, and audiobook work for me. That's kind of that that forms the bulk of what I do. And what I've been doing more recently, which I really enjoy, is real estate videos. Uh, I've been working with some clients for that as well, kind of building up that because uh, I love doing those. So I'm working with uh, with Sotheby's now, and I've done some videos for them. So that's an area that I'm starting to expand into now, which I'm really excited about. Yeah, that's fun stuff, you know, because it's like it has a porto cochet It has a Roman Whirlpool tub, you know, and, you know, wood cabinets all around. I know. That's I love it. Stuff. And, you know, they, they, they're they never going to stop having houses for sale, right? <laughs> it's like getting <laughs> yeah, yeah. into the car industry. They're always, we well, we assume they're always going to be making cars. They're always going to be selling houses, right? So there's always another video out there to do um, it's not easy to break into the real estate video market, but I've been fortunate to have, uh, have gotten some work locally with, with, as I said, Sotheby's here locally and, uh, hoping to do more of that. Yeah. What do you think is your formula for success in getting the work that you do? How do you do your marketing? Well, you know, the interesting thing in my path, because it was probably 10 years in the margins, right? Because remember I was running a pharmacy and had we have four children so everything i did was outside of this 45 to 50 hour a week box uh, which was tricky right to do and and building it up in the margins but it wasn't until i launched the uh, my vo podcast that i really started to see my vo career start to escalate and i, wow. I attribute that to the relationships that i developed and to the focus that it brought to me, because you guys know you do this every single week. When I'm interviewing people, people that I otherwise may not have ever known, and I, it's like a masterclass every two weeks for me from these amazing people in the VO world. So I'm learning things from them. I'm developing relationships with them. Uh, there's a lot of the people that have been guests on my podcast that have referred work to me and I've referred work to them. And so you develop this network and it's a way for you to create a brand and establish yourself out there on things like social media and your web presence. So the the podcast, which I never did for purposes of making money, ultimately, you know, because you never know until you look back how these things all kind of connect. But it was really the creation, the thought process of the Mike Lenz VO podcast that led me to start really focusing more on my VO career and led to more work coming my way. So huh. the, the podcast was kind of the linchpin for me anyway. Interesting. Huh. You know, yeah. If, yeah. If you're just joining us, our guest is Mike Lenz, who is a voice actor, and he's going to talk a little bit about podcasting here too. If you have a question for Mike that might pop up while we're in the course of our discussion, throw it in the chat room. Jack Daniel will get that to us and we will answer that question. I have a feeling people are going to have a lot of questions as we get back into a little bit more meat of what we're talking about here. So that Jack what... Daniels has an awesome voice, though, doesn't he? He's going to be a guest on my podcast soon. Yeah. <laughs> Shane, when are we going to be on? Uh, maybe after Jack. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> yes. yes. What led you to want to create a podcast? I mean, podcasting's been around eh, legitimately for about 12 years, and it's an interesting uh, form of communication, but what led you to want to do that? 
Yeah, and I had no idea what I was doing three years ago when I started the Mike Lenz VO podcast. I, <clears throat> the thought process was this. I had started blogging about 10 years ago when I first started, maybe 12 years ago now, when I first started in the VO industry, because I just wanted to be able to help people that were a little bit farther behind on their journey than me. So when blogging was all the rage, I started blogging. And then somebody said, hey, you should, you should write a little ebook. You should take all of your blog posts and create an ebook. I'm like, well, I don't know how to do that. So I taught myself how to create an ebook on Create Space on Amazon, and I wrote an ebook. <clears throat> and then somebody said to me, well, you should have a podcast. And I'm like, what the heck's a podcast? I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> and a good VO friend of mine said, you should do it. You'd be good at interviewing people. Uh, so you should think about doing it. So I started to do some research. And <clears throat> I'm somewhat of a goal-oriented person. So I remember it was about February or March, three years ago, and I set my goal of launching on June 1st, and I had no idea what I was doing. So in three months, I had to figure everything out, which I did, and we officially launched on, on June 1. And my whole purpose was to, again, just like I talk about on the podcast, is to interview amazing people from all areas of the VO world to help aspiring actors realize their dream of becoming a professional voice actor. And that was why I created it. But in the back of my mind, I also knew that it would provide me an opportunity to expand my network and get to know other voice actors, which I desperately wanted to do. So that was the reason that I created it, but I had no idea that it would develop into what it's developed and, and ultimately that it's led me to a, a, a kind of a parallel career path with the podcasting and the VO, because now in addition to doing VO and hosting a VO podcast, it ultimately led to the creation of Podcast Snap and actually helping other clients produce and in some cases co-host their podcast. So yeah. if you asked me three years ago whether that's what I would be sitting here talking to you guys about right now, never would have guessed it, but it's been it's been an amazing journey. Yeah. You know, seven years ago sounds awful familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I bet. I know, I know. We 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 didn't really I mean, I don't remember us thinking this is gonna be a video show when we first started. Right. It was just we knew we wanted it to be more radio, more live. We wanted it to be live. Right. <laughs> we wanted to not edit the show. So that was, you know, a little bit of a departure from, I guess, traditional podcast production. But um, that was, you know, a funny thing for us to just turn on the camera and go, hey, we're on camera. And what? <laughs> we're still here. So, so when you started your podcast, what was, because uh, we had role models or, or, or some models of our show. One was Car Talk. And one was uh, twit.tv, which is a big time, you know, show uh, network on podcast and all that stuff. What was like a show that influenced you that you kind of helped model your show after when you started? Yeah, I mean, I didn't have any specific VO podcasts because at the right. time there weren't a whole lot of VO podcasts that right. were out there were, that were specifically podcasts. Um, Lewis Howe's School of Greatness was one that, that, I, that I remember watching and kind of patterned my intro after his intro because I, I liked the way he did it. But for me, it, it literally was just this learning experience, just putting one foot in front of the other. And, you know, I remember um, I took a I took a, an online course by Marie Forleo called B-School. And <clears throat> she had recommended, and I do give her credit for even giving me, giving me the idea, the impetus to create the podcast. But I remember she said, you should you should reach out to somebody who's knowledgeable in the area that you want to be knowledgeable about. And if they're local, you know, buy them a cup of coffee and, you know, take them out to lunch and talk with them. Right. So <clears throat> I was thinking, well, who do I know that's pretty well known in the voiceover industry? And at the time I was thinking, well, Rodney Salisbury is about as big as I can think of. And so <clears throat> I literally wrote a cold email. And I remember saying a prayer and hitting the send button, asking him if he'd be interested in being a guest on my not yet created podcast. That's a good way and, to get it launched, yeah, right? Really. And, and so, I, so I sent him an email at three o'clock in the afternoon. At six o'clock at night, I got home from the pharmacy and my cell phone rings and I look at it and it says somewhere near Beverly Hills, California. And I'm like, nah, you know, so I pick up the phone and I'm like, I go, hello. And it's like, I can't do his voice oh, any, Rodney any Salisbury. You know, yeah. properly, but he's like, hello, this is Rodney Salisbury. Is Mike Lenz available? <laughs> and I'm like, hold the phone away. And I'm like, oh, and then I'm like, hey, Rodney, this is Mike. And <laughs> I'm talking for like an hour. He was asking me about how I, how I 
self-created my ebook because he was looking to self-publish. We, we ended up talking and, uh, and he ultimately was a guest on the podcast <clears throat> and we've developed a friendship. He's been a mentor to me and we probably talk once or twice a month now. Um, and that's just a perfect example of what I was saying earlier in that you are <clears throat> using this podcast to, um, as a vehicle, which I never really thought it would happen this way, but I hope that it might would be allow me to develop this network of fellow VO professionals. And that's really what it has developed into. And it's been, like I said before, an amazing experience, but you know, that, that was kind of the impetus behind it was, um, taking this online course saying, if you really want to launch something, then you need to just go, you need to just start and find somebody who's like the best in the business at what you want to do and reach out to them. So I did. And it worked. That's cool. Eureka. <laughs> Eureka. It's, it's a, it's a show. It's, you know, and they're not, see now podcasting to me. Now I used to be in radio many years ago at the dawn of time. And, uh, I was a public service director. And my job was to make public service programs, which were those programs that you would hear at six o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning. It's like, oh, I'm getting up. What on earth are they talking about? But it was radio production. It was this, you know, it was guys talking, but you, you know, I had to record them. I had to put the intro and the outro on it and make that happen. And that's essentially what, for the most part, what podcasting is. Mm -hmm. So it's the democratization of public service broadcasting. It's anybody it is. can have their own show. Well, you know, and we talk about this all the time in the VO industry, right? Because anybody who has a microphone and a computer is like, oh, I'm a voice actor. I can, I can do this. Yeah, Why not? Right. You know, and, uh, and I think to a certain extent, you know, the podcast, and we talked about it before we went on, is that the expectation of the quality level isn't nearly as great in the podcast world as it is in, in our VO world, but, but it's getting better. And the expectations are getting greater in terms of the, the production of podcasts. And, so, you know, so I, I'm, I pay attention to the podcast world and it is without question, you know, uh, I'm, I don't coin this phrase, but it's the wild, wild west right now in the podcast world in terms of there is so much um, interest in it. The growth, you know, one statistic, if I can remember correctly, I posted it on LinkedIn was I think in 2017, 42 or 47 million people watch or I'm sorry, listen to podcasts weekly. And by comparison, during the football season, the most popular rated show is Sunday night football. And that gets about 22 million viewers per week. So that's a pretty impressive number, but yet overall as a, as a, you know, in the, in the United States anyway, only about 25% of people actually listen to podcasts. So the upside is huge. And I've always said, you know, I said it at Fafcon, I did it, I did a presentation at Fafcon, Fafcon that the opportunity for voice actors, because, you know, we know our way around the editing software, we understand microphones, we understand recording, so we can be a nice resource for people who are out there looking to create their own podcast, not only individuals, but also organizations and companies. And I've had the opportunity to speak at a couple of conferences about not only the role of the voice actor in e-learning, but also the role of podcasting in corporate learning. And the not only external podcasts, which is what mine are and what most people listen to on iTunes, right? but internal podcasting within organizations so that they can better train their workforce. So if you're trying to uh, get information, disseminate information out to your, in, in the L&D world or into the sales enablement world in corporate America, you have an opportunity to get into the earbuds of millennials because that's how they get their information, right? These right. days is through podcasting. So on their commute to work, on their way home from work, when they're out walking the dog, when they're jogging on their treadmill, uh, they can listen to not only an external podcast, but an internal podcast that's proprietary information related to that organization. So several of my clients now are, I'm helping them create actually internal podcasts that the world will never hear. You're only going to hear them if you work for that particular corporation. So hmm. I really think the sky's the limit. And then there's the whole topic of audio dramas, which are these fiction podcasts where now these voice actor chops can really come to play because if you have creativity, if you want to start creating characters, come up with different scenarios, different shows, you can do it. And th the world wants it. And companies are looking for new content all the time, especially in the fiction audio drama world. Yeah, that's old time radio. 
Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know? Only you have more. Exactly. Yeah, you, you know, you have fully stuff you can plug in there. And it, post production wise, you can do some really cool stuff. Exactly. I mean, it the sky's the limit. It really is, and it's an exciting. It's an exciting for me to be to be part of it uh, because I think it's a natural extension of what we do as voice actors and podcast snap has allowed me to kind of take that to the next to the next level if you will for myself personally yeah. so well tell us a little bit about podcast snap what exactly uh, are what kind of services are you providing yeah i mean it start it started initially because as i mentioned earlier i went to speak at a conference um about the role of the voice actor in e-learning so it was at a learning conference and there was a lot of fortune 500 companies there and People came to my presentation and we learned about how important it was from my perspective and our perspective, certainly, of using professional voice actors for your corporate e-learning. So as a result of that conference, an executive from Xerox reached out to me and said, hey, I want to start a podcast. I know you have your own podcast. I know you're a voice actor. I've never produced a podcast and I need somebody to co-host. Can I pay you? I said, yes. Sure, no <laughs> problem. You can. And that really was the beginning of Podcast Snap before I even came up with the idea. So that was my first client. And I then I had to really force myself to systematize how I would teach somebody else to go through the whole creative process and the pre-production and the production and the post-production process. So it forced me to systematize everything for that client. And then came the kind of the idea that maybe there might be a role for me in creating some type of service that helps people who want to create podcasts, but essentially don't know where to start. And that was what where Podcast Snap came from. So essentially what we do is we can do everything from the creative all the way to production, post-production, editing, uploading, and getting it out to the world. Um, I've got a web designer that's on our virtual team. I've got a, an, a graphic designer that's had over six years of experience creating podcast artwork. Um, certainly, you have me, and I have uh, myself and others that can provide editing services. So anything from creation to launch, everything in between and beyond, we are able to help our clients with uh, from really from soup to nuts. So it's a full, that's why we call it the concierge service, because we want to be able to help our clients and pay a lot of attention to them. And it's really designed for the person who, or the organization that has the resources to implement a podcast, but they don't have the time or maybe the desire to go through that steep learning curve. And they want to be able to have us help them every step of the way. And that's what we do. And that's what being an entrepreneur is. That's right. Solving a need. That's filling filling. Need. You saw something yeah. and you filled that need. And that's important. But it's fun too. I mean, of that's course. an important piece, you know, because I because you know, I don't want to I don't want to dive into something that I'm not really passionate about, but I love VO, I love podcasting, and be able to combine those two loves and create a business out of it, you know, it doesn't get much better than that. Yeah. Beats selling drugs, doesn't it? Sometimes. <laughs> you know, I saw your reference about opioids. It was just making my head shake, man. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> All right. Our guest here on VoiceOver Body Shop tonight is Mike Lenz, and we're talking about podcasting and voiceover and how they relate and all that kind of stuff. If you have a question for Mike, throw it in the chat room right now, and I'm sure you've all sorts of questions are raised in your head about what he's been talking about. Throw it in the chat room. Jack Daniel will get that to us, and we will get to those questions right after this break, so don't go away. Style. Power. You're watching the home of the NFL. The all-new iPhone. Reserve your Disney World season pass now. Through all the runny noses, three in the morning coughs. An all-new American crime story, tonight on FX. This week only, it's Pasta Fest at Olive Garden. Heart rate, prime. Blood pressure, perfect. I grew up with the classics, and now with StubHub, I can get authentic tickets to the best shows. The all-new Chevy Cruze from $16,995. Be inspired. Then get the beauty that's uniquely yours at Sephora. This week at Home Depot, it's our Garden Fest sale with up to 30% off all garden tools, sod, and seeds. Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. Well, you know, right now, VoiceOver Essentials is doing their annual $10 off on their Portabooth Plus carry-on travel bag sale, along with 
the same $10 discount on the purchase of a travel bag booth. How do you like that? That's a big microphone, isn't it? <laughs> we're laughing at the perspective of this shot right now. Yeah, it, it is kind of <laughs> weird. Like... <laughs> anyway, the Plus meets all the major airline size and weight requirements for carry-on luggage. It fits so you don't have to check it. Carry it on. It zips right. Your, your portable Plus fits right in there. It zips right up. And you take the strap, and you put it over your shoulder, and you are gone. And, and as long as your microphone isn't that big, you can probably fit it in there, too. Yeah, it might, might fit in there. You never know. <laughs> anyway, $10 off on the bag and the $10 off on the Porta Booth Plus. And as you can see, I travel with it when I fly out of LAX. So $10 off on the Porta Booth Plus. And $10 off the bag. Boy, you can't beat this. This thing has everything. It will take everything you can shove in there, including your clothes, your computer. This is how you can travel light. Go over to voiceoveressentials.com. Best way to go there, go to the bottom of the page, down on our homepage here. Click on the picture of Harlan Hogan talking into his Portable Pro on that amazing rack that it comes on. Mm -hmm. And that you can, you can, you can buy for that. And it will take you right there, and you'll see all the other fabulous stuff that Harlan has at voiceoveressentials.com. And you can order it. You can get just about anything, like the VO1A microphone, the Harlan Hogan Signature Series headphones. There they are right there. And all the other cool stuff. Thanks, Harlan, for being our sponsor here for the entire run of VoiceOver Body Shop. Long may he and long may us reign. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese. Coming back. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Mike Lenz is our guest. Fascinating, talking about all these different things. I think most people in VoiceOver have a lot of other things that they have to do. Yeah, unless irons in the fire. Oh, it's like, oh, but wait, wait, I'm doing this. No, wait, I'm collecting radios. It, you know, Selling like, Amway. I mean, you name it. Amway. Are they still in business? <laughs> Maybe uh, uh, Herbalife. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we got a bunch of questions from our amazing audience all over the Fruited Plain. And let's start off with Brent Allen Hagel. All right. Uh, hey, Brent, Brent says, he was a guest on my podcast. Hey, Super what do you know? Right. And He's now we have a new viewer. All right. <laughs> yeah. uh, Actually, yes. I know that name. Um, who else besides VO actors has Mike interviewed? That's the first question. There's a few others, but we'll start there. I mean, basically professionals, producers, creatives. Um... Yeah, it's primarily voice actors. I've had on uh, a talent agent. Uh, and actually, the my most recent podcast guest, the one that's up right now, uh, he was a producer for ESPN for uh for quite some time and then he changed career paths how about that and he felt that he needed to go into a different a different direction and um and his faith was kind of leading him in that direction and he ended up doing uh he produces and hosts a podcast how about that about christian athletes so that i i knew that i was going to be kind of off topic on the whole vo world but i love the fact that he was had been doing something for a long long time that people just assumed he'd do forever but he felt called to do something else and went in a different direction. And obviously, you know, my life has sort of taken a little bit similar path in that respect. So um, primarily it's VO people, but every once in a while, I'll try to get somebody like a producer or uh, perhaps a talent agent to give somebody a little bit different, give the VO community a little bit different perspective on, uh, on some of the other areas in the VO world. But 99% of it is other voice actors. We also yeah. mentioned this earlier, but um, podcasts uh, that you're currently listening to, what's in what's in your, what your favorite? list? Yeah. Well, the uh, Hardcore History is really cool by Dan Carlin. He, mm -hmm. but this guy's insane. I mean, he his podcast episodes are like five hours long. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. So I mean, if you're in the car driving for a while or mowing the lawn, you know you don't have to worry about changing tracks at all. But basically, if you're driving yeah, across probably. LA. At rush I mean, hour. You're going to get five hours <laughs> easily. It's no <laughs> yeah. problem. But it's real. He's really good. He's really good. I like that. Um, the uh, there You must remember this, um, which is about Hollywood from the 1900 to 2000. Yeah. Uh, she does a wonderful job. Um, Chris, Christina Longworth um, and she, Katrina Longworth, and she does 
a great job of just going through different um, the different actors from that Hollywood era and all their backstories. Um, and then uh, I I've really I like Lore, which is a fiction podcast, which is kind of spooky, scary stories. Mm. Uh, that's a lot of fun. I, I you know it's hard to listen to that when you're walking in the dark, but uh, <laughs> I, I really do like that one as well. So uh, those are kind of the three my three primary ones that I'm listening to. Um, I don't unfortunately have a lot of time to listen to them because I'm so busy Pro making them. Producing, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, those are those are three that I really enjoy. All righty. Uh, Fred North asked, do you have a booth at the pharmacy? No, you sold the pharmacy. You, 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 no, you sold I, it. I, but you I said, didn't think about that. I did con contemplate that because we own the building that yeah. the pharmacy is located in. So I still own the building. So over the, over the years, I did contemplate uh, possibly putting a, a booth into the pharmacy because one of the things that was difficult, obviously, was I wasn't available to audition until after I got home. So, you know, that's really kind of constrains you sometimes yeah. when you have a nine to five job. Yeah, it's that full-time job thing. Yeah, yeah, that full-time gig, paying those bills. Absolutely. Well, let, let's dip our toes into the production side a little bit, yeah. some technical stuff, because Devox wants to know, you know, preparing, recording, and editing podcasts, it's time-consuming stuff. Um, what are a couple unusual things that you've learned to streamline the process he's, he uses the word unusual i guess he's not <laughs> looking for well i you know i use a stack or something but yeah. um, um any things any like one like golden nugget thing that you've discovered along the way that like maybe a lot of people hadn't heard about uh not really a golden nugget i mean I, for me i started with the interview based obviously my the video podcast is interview based yeah. and the um i interviewed via skype which was uh, cumbersome to say the least. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have, yeah, I wasn't hardwired in. <laughs> yeah, you guys would know. I wasn't hardwired in. If my guests weren't hardwired in, it was just lagging and dropping. And it was, there was a couple of really awful episodes. Um, but I found uh, IPDTL, which I now use exclusively mm -hmm. for the podcasts. So, uh, which I've come to love. Uh, and the, you know, having, uh, in some cases, for some of the podcasts that I produce, because the podcast, the VO podcast, I use IPDTL and I record and it automatically downloads it, saves it to a download file, and then I can dump it into, I use Audacity to to um, edit. But uh, for several of my other podcast clients that I'm co-hosting, because there's a couple others that I co-host, I'll have them record on their end. Uh, and that makes life a lot easier because then I just have them send me a clean file. So if by chance one of my co-hosts, one of the clients that I that I record, I keep telling him to get hardwired in, but he hasn't yet. So when I'm listening to him on IPDTL, he's dropping, he's lagging. There's a lot of stuff going on, yeah. but I don't worry about that because I know he's recording on his end. So yep. having having the, the the person on the other end record is a huge time saver, obviously. And then you know having the ability to um, understand the software enough, whatever you're using, to be able to record on two tracks. So you being able to split IBD, IPDTL by taking that little, those little circles and moving them in opposite directions, that gets me a split track. So I'm not trying to edit on one track. So editing on one track is, again, you guys know, when you have somebody else coming in, the, the volumes are all, can be messed up and, and you, yeah. it just makes it a little harder to edit. So being able to have them on separate tracks and I'll say that a lot to my clients is just trying to make sure that you you get yourself set up so that you're able to record on separate tracks it makes a big difference. Right. Yeah, we always I, people occasionally hire me to help them with their podcast workflow. It always, you know, because I, I always come at it from my perspective. Right. And I, again, we don't host a traditional podcast. We're no. live to tape. And if it's right. not the greatest mix, we're married to it. And yeah. we've accepted that. And people are aware of that. They know that's the format. It's familiar. But for traditional podcasts, that ability to post mix after the fact, obviously, is huge when the levels go awry. They do. Oh, that. yeah. I was yeah. literally on the phone today with a client and he was talking about and he had just he was it was a consultation. So he's not a client and I'm not producing it for him, but he he we offer consultations as well. So he wanted an hour consultation to just kind of understand what it was that maybe he's doing wrong. So he had he had recorded for he launched this past just yesterday, his first podcast, and he's kind of backtracking, saying, I'm having trouble editing. Can you help me? 
he uses audacity but he's recording with a blue yeti in a room with the guests coming in and they're sitting there and they're changing their setting on their blue yeti and they're recording so he's getting one track because he's only using one microphone so i said maybe you might want to invest in another one uh, best case scenario you could be recording up what different you know different microphones and have different tracks because he's having to edit number one he doesn't know how to edit and he's trying to so not knowing how to edit and trying to edit one track with two voices uh can be a nightmare and he's discussed yeah that. What, we, we do a little i do another show it's called the pro audio suite and it really is a voiceover geek not voiceover geek but more audio geek podcast and we do that double ender method as well and that works for the producer we all four of us record on our ends and then we send right. over a wave files. I, I, it's a time consuming pro I mean, I'm lucky that on that show, I am strictly talent. I just get to send my file and I'm done. So I feel very lucky for that. But it, you know, one guy mixes it and then the, the, the head honcho edits the mix. So it's mixed yeah. then edited, which yeah. is really interesting. I mean, it takes me for, you know, a half hour episode, which is what most the ones that I co-host and, uh, the VO podcast is, you know, 30 to 40 minutes, but it's, you know, it's a good hour and a half worth of work for a half hour episode. So, you know, it, it does take time. You know, people think, well, it's a half hour episode. It's only going to take you a half hour to edit it. But if you want to do it correctly, if you want to make sure that it's done where the volumes are correct and you've tried to eliminate as much ambient noise as you can and you want to get your intro and outro mixed correctly, uh, it takes time. And it's a skill set that you get better at the more you do it. But, uh, you know, especially for people that don't do this for a living like we do, it can be daunting. The, the number one hurdle that I have heard in my travels in the podcast world that prevents people from creating a podcast is the technical side of it. They might have a great idea, but they don't have any idea how to record. And even if they figure that part out, they don't know how to edit. They don't know how to mix. They don't know how to upload. So again, you know, you find a need and fill it, but that's where we come in. We can help. How much of the Ipdiddle tool set do you make take advantage of, right? Because yeah, like you were saying, how you can change the mix and all. Do you take, it's got a pretty elaborate mixer. How much do you take it, advantage it does. of? It does. I don't use a lot. Primarily it's, there's volume settings. Obviously yeah. you, can, you got the little, you know, the little knobs you can move up and down. And then when and I discovered it actually at Fafcon, I just got IPDTL before I went to Fafcon Nine, and one of my goals of going to Fafcon Nine was to figure out how to do record in two tracks, and they had just I think they had just kind of created that that capability, and so I went there, I asked the question, he answered it for me, and as long as you know I, my my uh, dial is all the way to the left and my the person I'm recording is all the way to the right it magically records and downloads in two separate files. So that's primarily the two tools that I'm using for IPDTL. And just, of course, the, the quality, the you know kilobytes per second rate is, is wonderful. And it sounds like the person's literally standing right next to you compared to Skype. So uh, taking advantage of that has been a big difference in terms of the quality of the podcast that I'm able to produce. Sort of like what this sounds like. We try. Well, we, we try our there's best. a lot of live processing going on here folks i mean <laughs> you have no idea how much there's a ton of processing going yeah. on between this microphone and what you hear out there to make right. it sound yeah. decent yeah as as an interviewer myself as someone who's over 300 episodes of this show and been a talk show host what are some of the un unusual interviewing techniques you've learned to get better you know nice. or create more interesting conversation out of the people you interview well, I think to be a good interviewer, uh, I thought that's a great question, but I think to be a good a good interviewer, you have to have an inherent interest in other people. And not ever and that's not a bad quality if you don't, but you have to really genuinely want to learn more about the person that you're interviewing. So, I also host a local TV talk show, so I have an opportunity to to engage with my my interviewees face-to-face, uh, -face, right, which adds a whole nother dynamic, as you guys know, with your show. So that that creates a whole nother dynamic. But the the I think it's harder in some respects to have that connection with somebody that you're not physically next to, right? So you don't have that ability to, to have those facial interactions and, and, and hand interactions and 
uh, and, and, you know, interacting with them on that level. But I always try, my, my goal with every interview is, and you, I can, I know when, I, when it happens, is you start to talk to your guest and they may be a little bit nervous, right? Everybody's a little bit nervous when they start first start going. And then you ask a question or you delve into some topic and you sense that the person has forgotten that they're being interviewed. Suddenly, you're just two people having a conversation yeah. and that is magic. And you can tell as the interviewer when that happens. And boy, when that happens, you're like, oh, because now the listener is just a fly on the wall. Yeah. And that from a listener perspective is gold because you get to hear two people just having a conversation. And that's what I strive for. I don't always get it, but that's what I strive for in every interview. And it takes, just takes time. I've done almost 90 interviews on, on my VO podcast uh, and multiple other interviews on, on the other podcasts that I host and my talk show. So I, I've gotten pretty good at it, uh, but I think one of the most important things and you guys are doing such a good job of it right now, is to listen, is to make sure that you give your interviewee enough time to talk. I thought you were going to say stay awake. Well, <laughs> because... yeah, you have to do that. But ask the question and get out of the way. You know, it's yeah, kind of absolutely. the way to kind of shorten it down. Ask the question and get out of the way. Don't overrun your guest. Ask the question and get out of the way and let them say what they need to say. Yeah. And with that said, it's now time for our weekly Jack attack. <laughs> Jack Daniel has like a question. That. I like that. All right. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Jack, uh, I love that voice. Oh, Man. thank you. I love you for loving it. Oh, thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, by the way, Dan Carlin. Yes, I've been listening for many years. He is the best. I just love his show. Um, Mike, you've no doubt uh, picked up many great tips about technical and performance matters during your journey podcasts, which I love. But you also get to know your interviewees during the show. So my question is, have you also picked up any good life tips along the way? And do any in particular come to mind? Uh, oh, my gosh, yes. I mean, <laughs> just, just in, in short, I mean, incredible life tips. I mean, the friendships that I have made, uh, the the lessons that I have learned, the uh, the advice that I've been given on the podcast, like, I'm just like everybody who listens, you know, you just because I'm interviewing people doesn't mean I don't have my notebook out. And I'm like writing stuff down, because people are giving me, uh, you know, amazing tidbits. But the, but I, what I what I more than just the VO part, right, because what people and I say this on the podcast, people will hear similar things over and over and over again, because I always finish the podcast by saying, if you could give one golden nugget to an aspiring voice actor, what would it be? And if you listen through all 90 podcast episodes, you'll find a consistency, whereas certain guests will, will say the same thing as other guests. And pay attention to that, because if multiple people are saying it, then you probably should listen. Things like getting, make sure you get trained, make sure you're ready to don't do your demo before you're ready to do your demo, right? Things like that we all kind of know, but if you're an aspiring voice actor, you don't. But more than that, has been the personal connections that I have. I mean, my faith is important to me um, and people that know me understand that. And what I found amazing is that I've connected with so many people on, on, a, on a faith base that is developed into friendships that that's much more meaningful to me than any technical tidbit that I may have picked up on the podcast. So th those are the things that I carry with me is the friendships that I've developed yeah. and the relationships that mean much more to me than any kind of technical things that I might pick up, if that makes sense. Yep. Question from Doug. Yes, the announcer. And he announcer. says, uh, the announcer. I need to <laughs> enunciate that. Um, has your podcast replaced other VO marketing for you at this point? Well, it's led to more VO marketing. And what I mean by that is the creation of the podcast three years ago forced me to create a logo. And it forced me to really pay attention to my branding. And if you go to MikeLensVoice.com, if you go to my website, if you go to my podcast website, if you go to my VO online course, if you go to Podcast Snap, you'll see a consistency of branding. And that didn't happen by accident. And it took a long time to get to that point. And it all started with the podcast. So the podcast was the impetus for everything. And I love the, the logo that I created and I've been able to kind of take that across all my social media channels 
and everywhere. And finally, about six months ago, I um, hired a wonderful web designer who's actually on my virtual team for Podcast Snap. And she combined all of my websites into one, but they're separate, but combined. So you'll understand what I mean when you go to Mike Lenz Voice. Everything that you need to find out about me is there. And they're all kind of unique in their own way, but there's a consistency across them. So it didn't replace marketing. It caused me to focus more on my marketing and in particular on my branding, which I think has helped me in terms of my presence out there on social media and ultimately leading me to connect with clients on places like LinkedIn who are hiring me either to do VO work or hiring me to do podcasting work. So it's definitely made a wow. huge difference. All right. We have time for one more question, and I, I like yours. Oh, okay. Go Thank for you. it. Well, I appreciate it. There are, actually, there's a, we're getting a few more, and that means we're going to have to have you come back. Oh, I love it. Because we're Anytime. getting more and more questions. But um, my question is, the big thing right now in the podcasting world, Google Podcasts. Mm. Is it a big deal? Is it really a big deal, or is it just another Google experiment like they, <laughs> they tend to do? Uh, you know, this, this, could, this could be a whole nother, a whole nother oh, I know. episode. <laughs> But Google, yes, Google Google is huge right now because what, what happens is that people have to, if I put on my social media, go listen to my podcast, you've got to go somewhere else. You've got to leave yeah. the website. You've got to leave Facebook. You've got to leave Instagram and go somewhere else. And if you don't have an iTunes, if you don't belong to iTunes or Stitcher, then you've got to go create an account. You've got to go find me and yeah. you've got to get into iTunes. It's it's the barrier to entry. They're trying to 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 eliminate the barrier to entry. And Google has decided that they're gonna do that. So now when you search, you can actually, they're creating this technology where you can actually click and listen instantly. And what they're ultimately gonna do is, what I think is gonna happen, um, unless somebody does it before them, is create ultimately an app that people will be able to simply click and play and not have to go anywhere else but Google. And now that Google's in the picture, again, pay attention to the, to the flags, right? Like you've got, You've got Google playing, swimming in the pool. Uh, it's time to pay attention. Podcasting is going to become ubiquitous. It's not there yet, but it's it's on the way. And I'm just happy to be, you know, to be on my surfboard and riding it. Yeah, no doubt. It's a lot of fun. Okay, Google. Listen to the Voice Over Body Shop podcast. Okay. I'll continue playing Voice Over Body Shop, VOBS Voice Over Body Shop, Anthony Mendez, episode 128 of 7 to 2018. 18th? <laughs> and it brings up the podcast player. Yeah, I mean, it's a game changer. Yeah, it's, it's a game changer. Microphone simultaneously through another it's, Yeah, recording. I mean, it's just, it's just there. Yeah, it's a game there's changer. no it's barrier. Game changer. Yep, absolutely. I did not rehearse that. Nicely done. <laughs> it actually worked. Oh, right. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Aren't you? If I had rehearsed it, it would have worked. worked. And then when we did, it wouldn't have worked. That, I'm just glad I knew what you were talking about. Because if I didn't, you know, uh, you know, you would have been like, well, why doesn't he know about Google? <laughs> <laughs> it's very. I mean, it just it just was announced recently. So I I, I heard know. about it on Twitter or something. But. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mike, it has been a pleasure having you on the show. Interesting information. I see podcasting is in everybody's future. Oh yeah, absolutely. Definitely. So uh, again, you need, if you need help, give me a call. All right. And once again, what's the address? Well, the best place to find me is MikeLensVoice.com. All things Mike Lens, they're there. All righty. Fabulous. All righty. Thanks for nice being guys. with us. All righty. We'll be right back and we'll wrap things up right after this incredibly important message. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected 
respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. All righty. Well, thanks again to Mike Lenz. Learn something new every day. Yeah, I could have. I could have kept going. Out we there. would never have gone home because yeah. I once you get on that subject, I, I can. Yeah, not a problem. I'm already home. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Thank you. Who's on next week? A good friend of ours, a oh, great yeah. guy who owns a big recording studio down in Cypress, California, about about half an hour down the. I used to see him at the City of Cypress Fair every year. Right, a great guy, Tim Keenan from Creative. Uh, media recording and uh, he's going to talk to us about what it's like on the other side of the glass and how you're supposed to act and you know in a studio and how to get the attention of a oh, studio cool. owner that's so great that'll be great yeah uh, we need to thank our donors of the week who are donors of the week we've got a whole bunch that i've said to you so many times you know what folks these are intelligent people that donate to the show because we get to say their names every week Smart. tracy h uh tracy h reynolds i'll keep scrolling uh juliet juliet uh, juliet gray shows up in there yeah. yeah um we got one from eric aragoni we know his name well thank you eric it's really nice andrew kaufman say his name every week as well and we've also got cam cornelius our buddy he's over at voiceoverdude.com and that's the that's the new one since last week. And a lot of these are names I'm saying every week. So if you want to be have your name right on the air, we'll thank you right here. No matter what you donate, no matter how small, now how or no matter how often, we really appreciate the support. It helps. It really does. Vobs.tv. Look for the donation button somewhere on that it's, website. It's, up here it's a new website. I yeah. can't remember the button's it's, up. It's, there. it's still up there. Somewhere. It is. Alrighty. Hey, if you need help with your home studio, that's why we're here and why we do this show. By the way. You can go to georgethetech.com or you can go to homevoiceoverstudio.com home studio and uh, we'll be happy to help you out. Uh, let's see what else. Show logs, Jack DeGolia. I don't think, I think he's out of town this week, but the show log will get there somehow. <laughs> uh, and uh, we already po- talked about my podcast, right. but you know about the Pro Audio Suite. Yeah. And uh, if you want to be here live for the show, it's fun when we have some big time person here. It is. You know, you can be in the actual audience here. Let us know if you're in the greater Los Angeles area. Uh, and uh, write to us at the guys at VOBS.TV, subject line audience. And uh, we'll give you the secret handshake and let you mm-hmm. come into the clubhouse, which is kind of fun. Uh, we'll let's put the see. dogs in the house. Yes. At first. Yes. By the way, show us your booths. Isn't this cool? <laughs> this is where I think a lot of you record. This is someone's mother's closet. It's uh, Sean Pennington Baird's uh, mother or mother-in-law's closet he was traveling there was another picture with it with a mattress and all sorts of other stuff but <laughs> he was just in the closet we were him. trying to name that mic i think that's an audio technica 4050 or a 4040 yeah it's hard to say it's got that long basket so it could be a 50 could be and then he's got this little mic plugged into an iphone right next to it i guess for for a backup or just to show us the mic i don't remember i can't remember if that's made by blue or who makes that one that might be a zoom Actually, I think that's a Zoom microphone. Yeah. Plugs right into the phone. Nifty. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Hey, send us your pictures of your studio in landscape, not in portrait. That's right. Take them. No. Okay. That'll help us all out a whole lot. Um, let's see. We need to thank our sponsors. Of course, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. vo to go go VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins demos. All righty. Well, we need to thank, of course, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of lab, uh, Webcasting. That's right. And voiceover. Yes. Our producer, <laughs> producer Carson Curtin. Curtin. <laughs> Jack Daniel is here with us tonight in the flesh, manning the chat room, keeping our YouTube channel sparkly. Thanks, Jack. Yeah. Our amazing technical director, Sue Merlino, for doing an upstanding job tonight. It's- Nailed it. <laughs> 
Great program, by the way. Watch Nailed It. Oh, I've heard of it. <laughs> is it the cooking, the, the baking, baking show? show. Yes, it's, it's Nailed hilarious. It. Hilarious. Watch that. It's on Netflix. Uh, uh, Jack only for the show notes we and, mentioned him. And, of course, Lee Penny, simply for being Lee Penny. What more needs to be said? Uh, that's going to do it for us. We'll be back next week, of course, with, uh, with Tim Keenan. And we know this isn't an easy business, folks. That's why we're here, to help you out with those technical issues and bringing you the best people in voiceover to help you with your business. You got a friend out there wanting to get into voiceover or you're with them, you know, tell them to tune into VOBS.TV. Check out the archive of our shows, the podcast, the YouTube channel. Massive free avalanche of information. It's a Bible. It is. Voiceover. I, I'm telling you, I get every couple of weeks, not as much as voice actors, but I get the been thinking about getting a voiceover. I'm like, VOBS.TV, start learning. That's the place. Get back to me in a month. All right. Well, that's <laughs> going to do it for us this week. Have a great week, everybody. Stay cool, depending on where you are, unless you're in Australia, in which case, warm up. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VOBS. Yes. Take care. Bye.